Hi, I'm Thomas the Accidental DM, your source for variety and tabletop RPGs. And one of the things I wanted to kind of uh, introduce everyone today is to Carbon 2185, a cyberpunk RPG. Now, uh, the reason why I'm kind of bringing this particular one up is because I think that this is a good game in terms of kind of an introduction to uh, trying out different styles, different genres of tabletop RPGs. The reason why I say that is because this particular game, which is uh, put out by Dragon Turtles uh, Games LTD, um, is that it is based upon the open game and license of Wizards of the Coast. So if people are familiar then with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, uh, they don't have to learn a completely new system. Now things have been changed in this uh, game in order to fit within the kind of the cyber punk um, uh, world that, that that's created in here, but those basic things that you're used to seeing, they're going to be present here as well. So things like advantages and disadvantages, skill rolls, uh, armor class, um, bonuses, all those sorts of things that you're kind of used to, it just kind of gets re-kind of interpreted uh, in order to kind of work within uh, the particular setting if we're talking about Carbon 2185, uh, and which is basically next century in uh, San Francisco. Uh, now, they did put out um, uh, in their successful Kickstarter to kind of get Carbon 2185 put together. Uh, they did have then a city source book, so you can play in other places. So I have London, Manhattan, Tokyo as well here. Uh, they had a mission book that came out uh, as well. Um, but most recently, they did just recently finish then a new Kickstarter to kind of expand this world a little bit more. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a, just a bit of a second here as well. But let's just kind of jump in so you can kind of see a little bit about what Carbon 2185 is, is about. And let me can start right here with the introduction. Welcome to Carbon 2185. Even if you haven't played Carbon 2185 before or any other tabletop role-playing games, you'll have no trouble using this book to create stories and play adventures in the dystopian 2185 universe. The entire game has been designed with ease of use at the front of our minds, and we give detailed explanations and instructions throughout so that even the newest of players and GMs can enjoy it. Gather your friends, club members, even a few random people from online. Carbon 2185 uses the Carbon RPG system. The Carbon RPG system was developed and built upon using the open game license of the world's most popular role-playing game. We've taken all of our favorite parts of the system, removed what doesn't suit our vision of cyberpunk, and added our own layers of mechanics and rules. In some cases, we wrote entire sections. Anybody who's experienced with the original game system has a unique advantage in learning the Carbon RPG system. That being said, the experience with the open game license is not necessary as we cover all game rules in this book. Uh, and so basically then, it gives you kind of a, a step forward if you are very familiar with uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but everything that you really need in order to play Cyberpunk uh, uh, Carbon 2185 is going to be in this particular text, and we can kind of see that as kind of playing out when we look directly at the table of contents. Uh, we have then kind of character creation, the different origins uh, that would be relevant then to Cyberpunk instead of having all of the uh, the background in terms of the, the races or as their... Um, now being called Ancestries. Uh, the new classes then are they're going to be specific then to Carbon 2185, such as a demo, a dock enforcer, a hacker, investigator, a scoundrel, the various uh, backgrounds, advices, and equipment, and how to do kind of adventuring and economy. A nice section here on combat and the rules as well, which again, a lot of those are going to be very simple, familiar to things that you have uh, know before from uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, uh, but with some modifications. So you do would still want to kind of look through here to kind of get those differences that are going to be in there. Uh, then the world that's kind of being built out uh, is particularly in this book is this the world of San Francisco in 2185 section for game masters how they can kind of put together and the one thing I, I kind of want to kind of mention as well uh, in kind of the the spark and kind of the genesis for this particular video uh, is we do have Chow's request uh, which is um, a two-part series that's in this particular book uh, in order to kind of get people started. One of the things that uh, I was kind of appreciative uh, with the more recent Kickstarter is that they kind of finished this campaign out. So it's not just these kind of two random sessions, uh, but they came up with four more sessions that were added in to kind of really make it a campaign so that you're able to take characters from first, uh, first level all the way up to sixth level as it's kind of playing itself out, which I, I personally find it kind of a kind of a great kind of beginning. So let's just kind of jump in and take a little bit about and see what is in Carbon 2185's kind of uh, book itself. Uh, so we have just kind of some of the kind of the backgrounds, uh, uh, quote unquote, races, ancestries type stuff that we see here. Uh, then we have our various classes, just so you can kind of get an idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, Demo um, is uh, the oncoming storm, natural leaders, and heavy weapon experts. Don't be surprised to see one of these tanks carrying around a minigun as it were, as if it were an Uzi. So that kind of gives you an idea of who we're talking about with the Demos. Uh, docs, trained healers who feature the latest and first aid implement, implants, but don't let their scrubs fool you. These punks know exactly where to target your body uh, to deal maximum damage. And you have enforcers, the classic soldier back 
backbone of any group. Enforcers can uh, be anything from a sniper uh, laying prone 600 feet from their target to a swordsman wielding a katana in melee combat, a hacker utilizing exploits, hackers control battlefield technology, they can remotely explode enemy grenades, etc. Investigator, whether looking for missing persons or connecting the dots in some secret scheme, you need an investigator, a scoundrel, the scoundrels are fast on their feet, dealing extra damage to surprise enemies or when attacking while on the move, scoundrels of the shadows within the shadows. So you really get kind of the idea of, of who we're talking about in the in the open game license of Wizards of the Coast where we're just looking at these these classes. So they have been reskinned and they've been reworked to kind of uh, fit with this particular uh, setting itself. So we have things we're used to seeing, your hit dice, your, your saving throws, proficiencies for the various classes, etc. Um, then we can just kind of see a list of some of the tools, so kind of the uh, the packs that we're kind of used to within uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. So we have a chef's kit, a disarming kit, a disguise kit, first aid kit, repair tools, lock picks, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, large list then, of course, of uh, some of the ammo and attachments and, and mods, um, because we do have, you're, you're talking about kind of cybernetic enhancements as well, so we see some of those, but it, it's, it's, it's all fitting within those pieces that we would be very kind of familiar and used to. And so I really do think that this game is uh, very much kind of a kind of a gateway uh, in getting and helping then people to kind of discover other types of RPGs uh, besides just then the, the Dungeons and Dragons. So it's a good uh, uh, quote unquote, I guess you want to say kind of a gateway game. I think that would be kind of the best way to kind of talk about it. Uh, and then whole section on, on the various vehicles, uh, bonus actions, order of combat. So I mean, it's, it's all what we're, we're expected to see. Initiative, turn order, bonus actions, reactions, etc. Again, uh, working then very much with that uh, open game license of uh, of uh, Wizards of the Coast, uh, some elements here about the, the game world that we're dealing with, um, kind of very much you've got these um, massive corporations that have kind of taken over and have their kind of control over different things uh, and are kind of the ones that are kind of really ruling and taking over for governments in the uh, 22nd century at that time. Um, you have some uh, random events as well that you can kind of work in to kind of help then with as a dungeon master or a game master in this particular case to kind of have those uh, sorts of things happen and how they can kind of build themselves uh, build themselves out. Uh, then in the back, of course, we have what we're used to. I mean, we're even talking about having challenge ratings here. Again, how good a challenge rating is, I, you know, I think that's open to interpretation in terms of DMs, but that's given us here. So one, again, it's one of those layers then that we're kind of used to to kind of get people to kind of move over. And it's not just... a uh, uh, not just a game that's merely saying, well, okay, let's just, uh, let's just throw something out there and make it kind of uh, Dungeons and Dragon-esque. Uh, it really is a good, hearty, strong system uh, for lots and lots and lots of hours of gameplay and building and campaigns and those sorts of things. So it's not, it's not a gimmick. It really is then kind of a way of uh, helping people to kind of look at other types of RPGs, but with some element of familiarity that is a part of it as well. Now, at the very end then uh, is uh, Chow's Request, uh, which is this uh, beginning level campaign that's kind of been put out. And as I said, it kind of gets filled out then more uh, in the more recently concluded uh, Kickstarter uh, that was done successfully. And so it takes it then from the first two parts uh, up all the way up to uh, sixth level. I, I never want to uh, spoil any uh, adventures that are included in, but just to kind of give you an idea of some of the background of this and then the names of the various adventures that we're talking about. Um, Chow's, uh, Chow's Request is set within San Francisco, uh, which is uh, at this time then you are playing members of Jackie Chow's crew. Um, Jackie Chow is a red pole or what would be kind of as a lieutenant in the 16K triad there in, in San Francisco. And at this particular time when this game is playing itself out, um, your particular crew is in kind of a battle then with the Wai Che warriors. Uh, and so that's kind of where it's kind of building itself out then. Um, and then the first one, the first two that are within then the, uh, the core rule book itself, Chow's Request, uh, Stone uh, Mulo's Rage, then you have the death of Dani Zhao, uh, then you have Night at the Opera, um, then the part five is uh, Chow's Resolve, and then part six is called Dragon's Requiem. And so you, you kind of are being dealt with this interplay then that's happening within San Francisco in 2185 and this kind of turf war that's going on uh, between the various factions in San Francisco at that time. So this is just kind of, as I said, um, kind Kind of an introduction just wanted to kind of let you guys uh, see uh, other things that were out there in terms of uh, things that were familiar to Dungeons and Dragons but not exactly they did have uh, interlink to carbon 2185 mission uh, which is kind of a, another mission book that's a part of it as well uh, we can kind of uh, take a just a quick look see at the table of contents with this here so we have um, 
uh, roadblock, uh, end run, uh, interlinked, uh, part one, mistaken identity, uh, part two, songbird, part 2.5, on the road again, uh, part three, the defector, uh, part four, message in a bottle, part five, a song in mockery, part six is the postscript. Uh, and then some of the uh, background pieces, uh, maps and whatnot that are a part of it as well. Uh, and it does, you know, as a fully fleshed out kind of system, it even <laughs> provides us then with a, uh, a, a game master screen. Uh, and we see some things we would kind of expect to kind of see. So, I mean, it's, it's somewhat similar uh, in some ways uh, to uh, Dungeon Master screen we've seen in 5e, but with some uh, elements specifically tailored to what we're talking about in uh, Carbon 2185, so kind of ability checks, uh, DCs for things, um, costs then for, for armor and weapons, uh, kind of hacking, armor proficiency damage, uh, skills, the various skills and, and what you might call for them. Uh, and then over here we have some weapons with their costs, their ranges, their damage and all of that. So some of those things um, that I think we w you might not be as familiar with it from a Dungeons and Dragons uh, coming in to it from. And so that's kind of what's put on here. And I gotta say, uh, I do have a thing for um, the kind of the art that is put on uh, Dungeon Master Scream, Game Master Screams as well. And I gotta say, I mean, this is very much kind of fitting then with the whole ethos of what we're talking about when it comes to kind of um, uh, cyberpunk type of thing. So it, it kind of fits really, really well. I will, in case you're interested, I will leave uh, links down in the bottom, down in the description, kind of uh, where you can find more about uh, Dragon Turtle Games and Carbon Torn 185. And I'll just kind of leave it by kind of giving just kind of a little quick look at the uh, the source, the city source book as well. And I believe there, with, if I'm, my memory is correct, um, I believe the most recent Kickstarter does include that. I, I think they did unlock the uh, the stretch goal of having another uh, city uh, source book adding, which I believe is Berlin. And so that's going to be another as well. So you have then San Francisco from the core rule book. Uh, you have Berlin from the new um, uh, Kickstarter. Then you have London, Manhattan, and Tokyo. Uh, Kind of a lot of great cities to kind of live with uh, in terms of kind of playing within. So uh, just want to say uh, thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, comments, issues, uh, concerns about anything, uh, put them down in the comments down below. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed what I uh, presented today, uh, please uh, give me a, a like and subscribe. Um, share this video with other people. Uh, and if you've got some things you want me to take a look at it, I'd be happy to because I think this is all about then kind of sharing our knowledge, sharing our learning kind of together. Uh, but thanks for watching.